Welcome in part 2 of Project Free Jazz. In part 2 we will be examining different random number generations and how, they, how we can map them to musical parameters. Just to repeat what we did last time, I created a pattern called p-white which should generate random numbers between 50 and 70 and it should generate exactly 5 of them. Patterns, if you remember, cannot generate any values themselves. For that to be, to be possible you have to convert them to a stream first. And once you have them as a stream and you've stored it in some variable, you can call the next method on the stream to get the next value every time. When the pattern has uh, generated all the values we asked it to generate, so in this case it should have generated five values, then the stream uh, will start to return nil, which indicates that the pattern is finished. Um, instead of calling next, every time over and over again, we can also ask the stream to return all its values at once. And if we do that, it will generate a list of values. And with this debug call, we can again print it to the post window. So let's try it. So every time I re run this block of code, a new p white pattern is instantiated. It's turned into a stream and all the values it can produce are produced into a list and then debugged onto the post window. And if every time you execute this uh, code, you will get a different list of numbers, all between 50 and 70 and always 5 long. P-white um, is a number generating pattern. So every time we call next on the P-white, we get a new number from it. On the other hand, there are also a second type of patterns in Super Collider, and those do not generate numbers, but they generate something called events. So what do events look like? pbind is an example of a pattern that generates events. So again, we have to call it as stream on our pattern before we can get values from it, and we can call next on it. Uh, but if you have an event pattern, instead of a value pattern, you have to pass an empty event into the next call, otherwise nothing will happen, or at least not what you want to happen. So let's see what comes out of our event pattern. If I, ex if I ask one value from or one result from it, and as you can see, it's not a value that comes out of it, but it's instead a list of key value pairs. So you have a key instrument with the value default, you have a key duration, with the value 0 0.1 and you have a key MIDI note with the value 50. And one uh, nice thing about these patterns, uh, yes, about these patterns is that they have a play method. The play method will internally convert the pattern into a stream and then also send it to your speakers using the instrument that you specified here. But I've just specified the default instrument, which, which is a very simple instrument that comes with uh, Super Collider. Note that you have to make sure that your server is booted. So you can do that here. A server. Uh, now it's booted already, but you can here choose boot server if it's not booted already. Or you can press Ctrl B or Command B on a Mac to boot your server from within uh, without using the menu. So let's play. Uh, the event pattern. As you can see, we ask for again for five notes, uh, MIDI notes between value 50 and 70, and we want it to play with the default instrument. And each note should last for 0 0.1 beats. And indeed, every time we play, we get a different musical result. So what we did now is we used a random number to set as a MIDI note. But of course, uh, nothing prevents us from using random numbers to set the duration or to do other stuff, and that we will do later in the tutorial. Now, something interesting about these random number pattern generators is that they come in many varieties. And each variety, each, each variant, if you like, has a different musical characteristic or has different applications. So before we can really get into making our free jazz music, we should investigate some of those random number generation uh, patterns.
So we have a py-white again. I have written this code here to plot the values that it generates as well as play them with the default instrument. So we can hear what the values sound like and we can also see what they look like in a graph. And py-white, as you will see, looks very random. I don't know if you could follow that. On the other hand, we have here a second type of random number generator and it's generating something called Brownian motion. Um, it will again generate values between 50 and 70, but this time we also have to specify a step size, a maximum step size, and then again also how many values to generate. So what does this do? Let's have a look and a listen. As you can see, this looks very different, or maybe you don't see it immediately, but let's compare it with the previous plots. Um, this was my first plot. As you see, this is much, this is a bit more random than this one. In fact, this one will always use the step size that we use, or maximum steps, at most the step size that we use in every step. So here we, it has done plus one, plus one, minus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, plus one, plus one, and so on. So you really have a stepwise uh, movement in the random values. You never have very big jumps like you, like you have uh, here, for example. Although this looks the same, it's really different. It's really step one, step one, step one, step one every time. And here it was really a jump from this point to this point in, in one uh, jump. Uh, now this stepwise uh, random numbers is very useful in case, for example, you want to generate, say, a walking baseline. And we will be using P Brown quite a lot for many applications. We will also use it to gradually vary, for example, amplitudes or other parameters, uh, not just the MIDI notes. Then here's a th uh, third type of random number generator. It's a geometric version version of P Brown. And the difference is in P Brown, we kept on adding uh, at most the step size to our values with PG Brown. Uh, we will multiply the previous value with at most uh, some factor to get the next values and then you get something that looks a bit between white noise and p brown uh, in terms of randomness so yeah if, if p brown is too too lame you can use pg brown to get a bit more spice or if you want a lot of spice you can use p white These three patterns all generate uh, more or less continuous values between 50 and 70. If I run P white with floats, I get out float values. If I run it with integers, I only get out integers. So it's something to be aware of because it, it can uh, cause some subtle bugs in your code if you forget to add the decimal point or you add one where you didn't want to add one. So these patterns, they all generate values between a lower bound and an upper bound and then have some specific characteristics. But here's also a different kind of random number generator and it's one that randomly selects stuff from a list. And the first one is PRAND, so every time I run PRAND I will get a list of 10 values and all the values are drawn from this uh, list of values and as you can see uh, numbers can repeat sometimes uh, no problem as we can we will always have 10 values taken from this list of possible values and musical applications for this include for example selection of durations if you don't want the complete madness of full p white you can limit your durations to sensible values like a half a beat, a quarter of a beat, or an eighth of a beat, uh, stuff like that. So we will be using that a lot as well. Then PX rand is a variation on P rand. And what is the difference? Let's see. If you do PX rand, it will never repeat the same number uh, immediately. 
So if you look in the previous one here, for example, we repeated 0.25 three times. If you use px rand, you will never see a repeated number. Of course, after a while, they can be repeated again. So like this one is repeated here. That's no problem, but it cannot repeat immediately after in the next in the next iteration. Can be useful if you want to guarantee some uh, something changes between two steps. And then a third variety is PW rand. Uh, this again selects values from a list, but the difference this time is it also takes a list of weights, and these weights you can think of those as a kind of probabilities. So the lower the weight, the less chance you will you will choose the according the corresponding number from the list. So in this case, 0 0.5 will be chosen only uh, 0 0.5 times out of uh, well, I mean only in in a, in a small amount of times, whereas 0 0.25 will be uh, selected more often, and 0 0.125 should be selected most often. Now these weights here, something special about those, uh, probabilities in mathematics, they always have to add up to 1. And that's the reason why I call this normalized sum on this list of weights. So that if you execute only this code, you can do that by selecting this small part and pressing Control enter again or Command enter. So then you see that it has rescaled all the values in the list so that the sum of all the values is exactly one. This is what we need if we have uh, probabilities. So whenever you use PW rand, be sure to normalize your weights, otherwise it will behave not the way you want it to behave. And then we are almost at the end of this part of the tutorial. In the next part, uh, we will be generating really musical textures. We will uh, use real instruments or real sounding instruments and we will uh, be uh, on our way to generating our free jazz. Before we can do that, I still have to explain two useful patterns. And one is the PN pattern. PN repeats other patterns. So for example, I have here P Brown that generates 20 values with a step size of one with values between 20 and 50. And then with PN, I repeat that 10 times. And now, why don't I just say here P Brown 200 instead of doing 10 times P Brown of 20? And the reason you can see in a plot. So let's compare 2051, 200 as stream all plot. So if I execute the P Brown with 200, I get something like this. If on the other hand I execute the PN, I get something like this. And I hope you can already see the difference. So this is the pure P Brown, this is the PN of P Brown. And do you understand what happened? Maybe not, but I will explain. So here in the pure P Brown, we always worked with the step size of one. And there's then there's the risk that like here that you get stuck in some local minimum and it's not so easy to to go to a different level because you always have these steps that are added or subtracted and, and it's very easy to, to, to remain stuck for a while in the same region of values. If, on the other hand, we do a PN of P Brown, then we just do P Brown, we let P Brown generate five values, and then PN will repeat P Brown, but when the P Brown is repeat, repeated, it starts with a very different starting point. So after every five values, you see this big jump in the values. And this is sometimes musically very interesting, uh, that you have a bit of continuity, almost continuity, and then a sudden jump, and again a bit of continuous sudden jump, a bit of continuity, sudden jump. So this is a type of behavior that we can use to make other uh, musical textures, and we will be using it a lot in the, in the next part of the tutorial. And a second very useful pattern that we will also use a lot in the next tutorial, in the next part of the tutorial, is the pseq pattern. pseq pattern will just sequence whatever you pass to it, 
So you pass a list of things to pseek and then it will execute one. It will choose one after the other until the list is exhausted. And it will uh, go over the list again and again as many times as you ask it to do. So with this uh, repeat value here. Um, this sounds a bit fake, so I will make another example that is a bit simpler. Suppose I do this. So I say sequence the values 1, 2 and 7 and do that 3 times. And what do you get if you do that? You get indeed 1, 2, 7, 1, 2, 7, 1, 2, 7. So that's indeed three times the contents of the list. Instead of passing um, values here, you can also pass patterns to it, like you see here, uh, and that will also be useful uh, when we map those stuff, those things to musical events, to musical parameters. So that concludes part two of the tutorial, which was still a bit boring, a bit theoretical. There was not a lot to hear yet, um, but we will make up for that in the third part of the tutorial where we will start to use these patterns and random number generators to develop several musical textures and also uh, we will start to generate uh, interesting musical events. So hopefully see you then.